weekend. It's Thursday evening. We decided that we're not gonna go. Well, I, I was gonna go to that that rally, but I know this whole coronavirus thing's happening, and we gotta reopen California. But I promised my brother and some friends a Mojave trip for Memorial Day weekend, and that's what we're doing now. We're heading down to Mojave. And part of my plan was getting out of the Bay Area. I wanted to find some good farming place, farming supply place, and buy a buy a new chicken. You know that that was that was definitely part of the plan was to get myself a, a new chicken. Yeah, way chicken. I got something way better than chi a chicken. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes the universe the universe will deliver what you deserve if you believe. You should get what you deserve. The universe works in a mysterious way. Go ahead and show. Show, show them what we got instead of a chicken. This is a little Mojave. Can't really tell. The dark. universe humbled us with a baby crow. So now we must humble the universe by taking good care of it. It looks like it couldn't be, couldn't be more than a couple weeks old. Since we found her on the day that we're going to Mojave, I've decided that the name will be Mojave. It's very sad. She got a little scraped up knee, but we put some Neosporin on it and a Band-Aid. Looks like she's doing all right. Definitely can't. Huh? That scraped the knee changes life forever. Yeah, exactly. That, that crow's life just got a whole lot more interesting. That little fucker's gonna see the whole world. Right? Day one, you know, she, she doesn't even get to stay the first night in her new home. Day one, vacation with injury. But I think she's gonna be okay. <laughs> Probably not the best idea, but I mean, hey, the, other, the only other option was you know, I could not keep her, take her to, the, to a vet or, you know, humane society or whatever. <laughs> or leave her at home where she would surely die with no food and water for four days. So we're going to experiment with this. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be, but this is what's going to happen. So nope, not going to get a chicken. We're going to get a crow. We got the crow. I was super excited. This is my sixth crow that I found in my life. The first one I found, uh, some of you know if you follow me, you know that my, my first crow I found when I was 17, but that's not where the 17 comes from. <laughs> the 17 is really just spontaneous, though there is a little more to it. <laughs> So now we're finally going to have a crow back on the show. I, I went a little silent when I first started the show because I did have a crow and I ended up losing her and I was, I felt so bad and I was embarrassed and I was, you know, I, I just know that I'm not going to make any of those mistakes again. I caught I hope. God, I gotta be very careful. And she ended up flying away from me and ironically enough, she flew away from me on 4th of July. I, yeah. I lost Chase on 4th of July, 2017. 2017 was the last time, the last crow I had. So now we're 2020, <clears throat> heading to Mojave, May 21st, and we found a, a crow in about mid-afternoon. I found it, found her, caught her, named her Mojave right off the bat. I just, I, I didn't even hesitate. So that's what it is now. And uh, we're looking forward to what the other things we're gonna be doing here. Uh, at the property, so we got the shed built. We got a little bit of a, you know, what do we call it, a five-star resort? Yeah. And oh man, because we're gonna do a little bit of more work on the shed, but I also plan on doing. Um, uh, we gotta fix up the Trump sign because it's actually it needs maintenance. It hasn't been nothing's happened to it with it for a while, and even though Google Earth hasn't updated in a long time, it's been a while. <laughs> Uh, what else are we doing? We're gonna dig a pit. We're gonna fill it with water. Put a tarp down and fill it with water. Make it into a pool if we can find water. I mean, I, I wonder if that's even gonna happen. We gotta find water. That's important. Gotta get the water tank filled up. And uh, uh, we got we got archery that I, we're gonna be doing. One of my goals this time is to try and see if I can hunt a rabbit. So that's that's gonna be that's gonna be new. We're gonna get some, we got some lethal arrows this time. I would like to catch at least one. I hope so. Find it one, catch one, kill one, cook it, eat it. I, 
know some of you might not think that that sounds very nice, but you know what? You don't need a permit to kill these jackrabbits. There's you know, millions of them running around out there. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna see if I can you know, bag me one of them. I don't know about eating it. I was warned that they had bot flies, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, other than that, what else? What else is on the agenda? Anything you know about Alex, Mr. Gold? Special effects trip. Do we got shrooms? Oh yeah. We. Oh yeah. Do we got shrooms? Also documenting the whole trip there, every stop we make along the way, and um, to be honest, though, it's going to be pretty late by the time we get there. It's it's probably going to be about midnight. Uh, but whatever happens, if anything does happen, any stops we make, we're going to be we're going to be checking it all out. And I got my I got Joe uh, Joe Pepe going to be doing running the camera here, and hopefully he does a better job than Mr. Gold. Hey Steve, so can you tell me what happened? What happened? Oh! What happened, dude? We just got I here. Want to record. Well, not too surprised. We got robbed. I had a water tank in here, a 275 gallon water tank at uh, I found on the internet. I never even got a chance to use it. I was gonna fill it up with water this time. We had plans for it, but I don't know what happened. I mean, I guess, my best guess is the lock was picked, but there's damage to the board down in the corner over here where it looks like they actually, they broke in. I didn't think I was keeping anything of any real value in here, but they got in from here and I could only guess it's from the inside, I guess, they picked the lock and then stole my water tank, stole my cast iron skillet. Glad that was for free, it was just a donation. Um, and then I guess they just they snuck it out. Somehow they got it out and they even were courteous enough to lock, lock up. Um, they also stole a box of used drywall screws. Wow. I mean, it wasn't a box, it was like a, a chocolate nest quick container that <laughs> I had filled with drywall screws, and, you know, just so I can do stuff around here when I come out, but yeah, that's gone. This is weird. What's this? Like cotton. Huh. Let me go take a look at that uh, piece of wood. That is really weird. Where did all this cotton come from? It's like all over the side of it. I think it probably came from these plants, actually. Actually, I think these plants probably produce it, but yeah. Man, it's all over it. Kind of sucks. Me and my dad, you know, we put a lot of hard work into this thing. And this is a lot of damage. I don't even know where the... the oh, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, you feel violated when someone does something like this. We put... Yeah, you know, spent money on this property, uh, invest in it, and you spend all this money on this, all this material, and you know, try to make something, try to bring some development out here. It's a long, slow process, and someone comes along and they just want to, they want to do something like this. What? Okay, where's that hole? Okay. What's going on here, guys? Alright, fix now this chair. I'm doing him a favor. Let's take it out for a second. Missed the hole. What do you mean? So we need to do it a little bit higher. Actually, get it off. Just don't put too much weight on the when just on the powder armrest. Voila, I'm a I'm a handyman. So 
How have things been going so far? Wish Pearl was here. Pearl? Uh, The landscape is beautiful, flowers are blooming on these bushes, we got beer, breakfast is almost ready, we eat, go into town, get some water, <clears throat> yada yada. Pretty nice spot, so don't like to keep people from breaking into it, stealing shit. and clean. shit right here. Decided to finally do some hunting, do a little bit of hunting out here. Uh, been walking down this trail for probably a good half hour now. Laid out some bait. Oh, you know, I never noticed this hill here before. Huh. So this looks like I've reached the riverbed, but I think this is also a road. Yeah, last time I came through here, it was it was practically mud. This was about March, late March. I'm gonna climb up this hill right here. So far, I haven't seen any rabbits. Like I said, I put out some bait. This is like the most terrain I've ever seen. And I'm actually really surprised. I've never really notice this hill here. Wow. I don't want to jinx myself, but something I've also never seen since I've been out here. Wow. I've never seen a rattlesnake before. So many weeds in my fucking plants and my shoes. <sighs> Anyways, it's pretty nice. Really nice view. All you can hear, if you just be quiet.
bugs, flies, and you can feel, you can hear just a faint whisper of the highway. About five miles or so in that direction. I'm not exactly sure, give or take five miles. I wonder how this hill got here though. This is pretty amazing. So, let's see, so far I, I didn't get a picture, I was trying to get a picture, but so far all I've seen is a, a zebra tail lizard. I guess there's desert iguanas out here. I've never, I haven't seen a desert iguana. I've seen lots of lizard zebra tails. Um, you know, one time I saw, I think the last time I was out here, I saw one of those uh, like horn, horny toads or whatever. I can't remember what they were called. Um, the ones that shoot blood out of their eyes. Really neat. Okay, anyways. Gonna keep looking, gonna continue. So I just wanted to get a little clip of this really, really fast. This, I'm pretty sure that's the Joshua Tree in the background of where we found that pickup truck, which would mean that that pickup truck should be somewhere right around here. And it, it I kind of have a feeling that it's gone because I don't see it. If you guys remember, the first time I came out here, I did a little live stream here with that weirdo. And um, we found, I did a live stream where we found a pickup truck. And I don't know, I think it was actually, I think it was right here. I mean, here's the open space, but everything is gone. There's like no remnants of it left at all. The second time we came out here, it was flipped over, if you guys remember. Pretty confident that it was it had to have been right around here somewhere because I do I remember at one point I decided that I was gonna walk over to this Joshua tree and take a look at it but I never did but I'm just not I'm not uh, I'm not even seeing any trace of it anymore so not only not upside down anymore it's just I think it's just gone Anyways, let's go check out this Joshua tree. All right, you guys, here's the Joshua tree. As I promised, this was, this was the Joshua tree I said I was gonna head out to that one time. It's, it sure would be nice to have one just like this on my property. And I think someday I will. But it takes, it takes five years just to get a Joshua tree at a considerable height. I believe they're listed as growing one and a half inches a year, but that's, you know, that's incredibly slow even for a Joshua tree. I believe Joshua trees grow a little faster than that, maybe about two inches, two and a half inches a year. But yeah, they, they grow very slow. And they can live for a long time. Eventually, they get so big, what kills them is not our, not their age, but their their weight. It gets so windy out here that they eventually just blow over. This is actually really cool. This is the nicest spot I've found in the desert. Wow, this feels really nice. You know what, I'm just gonna enjoy this for a minute. This is just awesome. This beautiful Joshua tree. Some interesting facts about Joshua trees that I learned. One of the things that separates Joshua trees from other trees 
regular trees is that they never rub against their sister trees, their parent trees. Like if there was another Joshua tree right here, more than likely one or the other would die or they would just grow in completely different directions. For some reason, they don't do that. They never rub against each other. It's really odd. But I can only imagine, I mean, this is really rough bark, but I can only imagine what kind of you know, damage it might do these kind of spines because these things these things are like knives they are not they're no joke you know what kind of damage it would do to have one of these rubbing up against another tree constantly another joshua tree and with the wind out here the way it blows even though these things are very very sturdy that that's kind of something that i noticed in red dead redemption when the wind blows the joshua trees really move around they sway around in the wind in red dead but in reality, if you come out here, the wind gets so intense out here. I mean, like, I couldn't put an average on it, maybe 35 miles an hour average. But last night, like last night, it got insanely windy. You don't see these trees shaking in the wind. And I really kind of have to push on it to make this, just, just to get it to move that much. And, you know, I don't want it to, I doubt it'll break off, but I, they're, they're so hard, I, wouldn't, I don't want to take that chance to actually, like, accidentally snap an arm off or something because like I said what kills them is is them toppling over and you don't want any you know, weight distribution to you don't want the white weight to be unevenly distributed you know I just don't like messing with these trees all that much plus you're not you're not supposed to like if you chop one down I think it's like the same fine as a DUI a two thousand five dollar fine or something maybe 1,000 it's it's so odd that these trees are protected because I don't know they, they say I mean like environmentalists environmentalists say these trees are going extinct and that maybe sometime in the future there won't be any Joshua trees left but I mean you see you come out here to the desert in some places they're just everywhere you go to Joshua Tree National Park there's thousands of them you go over to Rachel Nevada you go north of Rachel towards towards uh, area 51 it's like it's like a jungle of of joshua trees and some people they want to move them like if you have one on your property you know people want to develop and of course people out here want you to develop it's slow economies the people want to, you know they, so they have there is ways around it um if you if you own the property and you get permission from the county apparently you can transplant a joshua tree they'll let you uproot it and move it someplace else but for me, I'm growing Joshua trees now. Um, when I was at Area 51, I picked some cocoons and took a bunch of took a bunch of seeds home. So I got Area 51 Joshua trees sitting at home right now. I hope they make it, man. I hope they're going to survive four days without any water. But I watered, I watered everything before I left. But we'll see. I haven't seen a jackrabbit since I've been out here over an hour now. plants I don't know why every time I forget the name when I hear it but they're pretty cool they pretty much only grow here in the southwest Texas Arizona New Mexico Southern California northwestern Mexico it's a uh, well it's just a bush but they live like they they also live um, a, a long time like Joshua trees 500 to a thousand years these things can live and um, I guess they spread by, you know, they just have little offshoots that come up, they, they kind of clone. So that's, I guess that's part of why they live so long is that they're, they, they clone themselves. And since the clone counts as the original, it just counts as having lived for that long. So pretty amazing, pretty amazing bushes, you know. You see these things everywhere, these bushes are all over the place and you, you wouldn't think that, the, you wouldn't think much of it like there was anything too, uh, complex about them they're just simple bushes but then you know you, you find out stuff like that and some oh, i always wonder what it was like to climb a joshua tree but it just looks like the thought of climbing a joshua tree with all these spines on it just does not sound like a good time <sighs> it's a little disappointing about this joshua tree is the first time i came out here 
all the seeds were gone. Like I found some seeds, but they looked like they would have been, you know, they were, it was too late. They were too far gone. And now here I am again. And again, the seeds, they, just, they come from this stuff right here. These little cocoons. Joshua's are yucca trees. And like yuccas, they get these little flowers on them that they turn into like these cocoon sacks. They look like eggs and they're filled with hundreds of seeds. Uh, another important fact that I learned about Joshua tree seeds, if you collect Joshua tree seeds, you have four to six months to refrigerate them. Otherwise they actually go bad. Uh, I didn't know that I was keeping them in a drawer, but I, when I found, by the time I found out it hadn't been four to six months yet, I didn't even remove them from the cocoons. I, mean, I, I saw that it was suggested that you remove them from the, the cocoons, but I didn't do that. I just kept them in the cocoons and put them all, put it into a, a sandwich baggie and threw it in my refrigerator. And I've pretty much kept them in, in my refrigerator ever since. To this For this trip, I grabbed one cocoon and I'm gonna spread some more seeds on my property, still trying to get that Joshua tree to grow. But I mean, you know, even if not just throwing seeds on the ground around my property doesn't get a Joshua tree to grow. Like I said, I do have more at home and I'm growing some of my own homemade Joshua trees. And who knows, maybe by fall, I'll be able to transplant one of them, but maybe maybe it's better to just wait, and wait like a, a year or something. <sighs> Anyways, let's keep going, keep looking, keep hunting. Well, what do we have here? Well, well. Here it is. I think. Is this the same license plate? I'll, I'll have to check. I can't remember. But I thought I came by here just now and I didn't see anything. But holy crap. Okay, I'm gonna have to drop a pin now. What the fuck happened to the truck? What the hell? Like, how does a whole truck just. I was like, it's getting a little, little bit less each time. Actually, a lot less, like significantly less every time we come out here. And now this is it. There was a whole truck here. But I, I'm glad I finally found the remains. Yeah. Only thing left is, hold on. What do we got here? Is this some of the windshield glass still? So, melted, mutual glass melted by candle wax, remember that? Well, mystery solved. Oh, somebody came out here once and decided to flip it over and then someone decided to come out here again and take most of it and leave this. I don't know. Weird, anyways, moving on.
Okay, I'm done. Um, I saw a squirrel. It was you know, obviously a lot smaller than a jackrabbit, and it was pretty far, so I didn't shoot an arrow at it. I actually tried to shoot the, the pellet gun at it, but now I'm thinking that I don't know what, what's wrong with the pellet gun if it's empty and I can't figure out how to get the fucking ammo in it. I don't know. It sounds like it's shooting, but it's obviously not, because then I just tried to shoot something that would have I would have obviously known if it, if I'd hit it, and like nothing came out. I tried to. I, I'm pretty sure I saw my brother put ammo in it. And yeah, I just. I don't feel like taking the time to try and figure out how to get some beads in it. But I'm not. I'm not empty-handed. I did find this uh, gander cola. It's a cactus succulent. Very, very prickly, spiny. Not something you want to fall on. But you know, it, it is a cactus. It is a succulent, and it will survive out here. So. I don't know, I'm probably gonna plant it on my property. But then again, I'm thinking maybe I might wanna take a piece home and see if I can um, grow it at my house in San Jose, since I, I do grow succulents for fun. <laughs> All right, so if, if uh, we'll see if anything else happens on the way back, if I see a rabbit or whatever, I'll take another shot. This ringer right here. Right there might be a ringer. Yep. What do it taste like? Glad you got that on camera. Now I'm a superhero. Mm, <laughs> that moves it, but that was at least um, hard to say. I think that's okay. That's there it is. Zoom in on that. So that means it's one point. If it was like that, or at least where the the hooks catch it, it's two points. Sweet. You all done? Joe. Your turn, Joe. Put my missiles too far into Saudi Arabia. <laughs> 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 
Where do I go? Yeah, around right there. <coughs> Jose, on the other hand, Joe. is Joe the Ho. Jose. Joe Ho. Jose. Jose. And the Pussycats. Who are you? Watch this guy. Oh, <laughs> I wonder what it's like to be eaten by a. Uh, Like, off topic question, but like, be, imagine like, like a, uh, imagine. I'm glad it's recording right now, he's just like, yeah. Imagine this big ass UFO just coming down, this big metal UFO saucer looking. Over there, like. The saucer looking thing just came down here and just came down here and aliens came out here and decided, hey, I'm going to eat you and just took a big chomp out of you. How, how would you feel? No, I'm being serious. Where'd he go? I asked you a question, he ran away. Is that his response? He just wanted to be eaten. Come here, I want to eat you. I don't know anything about that, by the way. Who said anything about shrooms? <laughs> Fucking tripping over here. That's what it looks like. I guess I'm wrong. It's appetizers. It's, a... it's appetizers. <gasps> Toppings. Yeah. Well, realize some more. <laughs> Come on, keep realizing. The camera's on, you know? North Korea say woohoo! Okay, that's a bad spot for that, obviously. We're gonna have to rethink this. Just stop that for now. Save the battery. We don't have that much. God damn, I'm thinking too hard. Is Luma. Luma.
humidity. Shut up. Damn it, she got out. Wow. My, my biggest agenda out here was to, is to bury Eddie. Someone had said to me that Eddie loved me. And, um, that's why we're doing this. I feel like maybe Betty did. somebody, an animal feeling love, but I, I definitely really liked this chicken, even though I, only, I didn't even have it for, for a year. She definitely felt like a member of the family. And I just, I don't know, I... <laughs> Betty gave us a, a lot of entertainment, and she just, she was so... It was so nice to have her around, even you know, with the fact that she was a bird and she was shitting everywhere, and, and she didn't lay eggs, which kind of sucked. You know, it was basically we just we just had a bird around for her, for whatever. But it, she was nice. She was very sweet. She was fun. She was a great lap pet. I, I maybe I shouldn't be saying all this now. I need to wait on because we got words that we're gonna say when we, when we get over here, and we're gonna we're gonna bury Betty by a Joshua. Chinese festivals happening down there. <laughs>
minute. We're getting all this. Oh, we, uh, no. absolutely no. 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 Not situation. She, um, it's been too long. Uh, if she was fresh, I'd say yes. I'm more you. I love you, Betty. I really did love you, Betty. She was a very... She was very fun to have around. She made... Oh, she made life really... Just... One of my favorite things I loved about Betty was waking up and listening to her jump down from a perch and, and start pecking all the, the little bits of grains of food that she didn't eat from the day before and just listening to those little pecks. Little peck, 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 peck. Like, just listening to that was relaxing for me in the morning and I would fall asleep just to the sound of her little pecks. That was one of the pleasures I got from her, waking up. She didn't wake up, she was never loud. She would, she would just wake up and she might make a little bit of buck, buck, buck. But mostly she just... She would just eat, and then if I didn't wake up right away, she'd jump back up on her perch and she'd go back to sleep until I got up. She was, she was, she never annoyed me. She was, she was such a quiet. She was quiet. Okay. I mean, there was sometimes I was frustrated, and I would get a little annoyed with her, but just because I was short-tempered. But it was at that time that someone said to me, like I, I just spontaneously told Betty to shut up, and I didn't. I'd never done that, and I didn't really mean to. And I know it's just a chicken, but someone who was there responded with, don't say that to Betty. Betty loves you. And that really, I, that's all I could hear when the morning that Betty died was that person saying, Betty loves you, Betty loves you. And I was just heartbroken, and I wanted to cry. To be honest. I was so sad. But, you know, that... easier for her to wear the suit if she had a little bit to drink first. It was always easier for her. She would get used to it in like five minutes. But if she was sober, she would run around for 20 or 30 minutes trying to get that harness on. But it was necessary because, you know, birds poop a lot. I'll miss that. I'll definitely miss that. Hey, I'll man. Go ahead. There
That's the thing that Mark liked the most was like EDM dance clubs. And I went to that. I mean, it wasn't the right scene for me, so I kind of left early. But I, was, I wanted to be a part of something like this for Mark. You know? So in a way, this is kind of like a metaphorical.
end. There's a new beginning. How you end this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can open it up there, Alex. I... Sometimes you're extremely discourteous. Actually, very often you're a very discourteous person. You just don't think about other people. But you know what? What you did here. That looks, this is, Alex, when was the last time you rinsed off your hands? than this. Fuck, dude. I think this might be a keeper. Trying to catch him, bro. I'm gonna take him back, then we'll look it up. favorite Pokemon when we used to play is Kecleon. It's a little lizard guy. It's the first alien. We're live. Well, you're not live, but you know. It's fucking sick, dude. It's like I'm like a Nuka Syria base. <laughs> Do it. Nukem.
Did you pump it? You gotta pump it a lot, you know that? Pump it like 10 times. Is that the pump? Is that really the pump right there? Can you pull that down? Yeah, there's the pump. You're like spitting them out. Just. Busters? Basically, I bury the shit right here on Ant Hill, right? And the aliens are gonna be like, hey, that's some shit right there, you know? I'm gonna go get it. And then they're gonna be like, yeah, wow, this is actually some good shit. And another alien's gonna be like, what? How come yours doesn't taste like my shit? And then the other alien's gonna be like, hey, that doesn't have the coronavirus. So the other alien's gonna be like, well, how do I get rid of the coronavirus? First alien's just gonna be like, oh, you just do this. And then there won't be any more coronavirus. Take shit and just bury it. find it, they'll know what to compare it to. Got it.